Okay, well, um, I've got it temporarily um, hooked up here at the moment just to demonstrate something to you. I've got my power supply in the side. It's uh, 18 volts centre pin negative. Um, so I've just reversed the um, polarity on my power supply. Um, I turned it on and um, to my horror it was um, what we call motorboat in. So let me show you. Henry Hoke was born and raised in rural South Australia. As you can His hear. His father was a Jewish mystic. His father was a chemist. Uh, don't laugh, Alex, it's all true. <laughs> As you can hear, motor voting quite badly. Now, normally, normally that is caused by the amplifier, by the plug not being pushed in properly. So I fiddled with that. I took the plug out, pushed it back in. I even brought in another amplifier from one of my sets to try. Um, exactly the same, so that ruled out the amplifier. So uh, I was thinking maybe one of these cores in the FM section, because it didn't seem to be making this noise on AM, it was only FM. If I demonstrate that again. A year ago, um, it See, it doesn't appear to be oscillating on medium wave or long wave. Otherwise, it's badly. And there was a call for people to come and remember. So I checked around the um, FM section, thinking it was just an FM issue. Um, I, I could get it to alter slightly by messing with the veins on the tuning capacitor. But um, what I did eventually is I just started running my finger around the circuit board on the back to see if I could find where it was. That were made when by I got Henry around this area. songs that Henry had sung. As, a, as someone who kind of known about Henry as he was coming into existence, but then also as someone who cares stop about him, how stops. people tell stories, it was an extraordinary afternoon to sit in this hall and listen to people describe this man with incredible affection that I knew didn't exist. There was something about the kind of willingness to it's want to participate in station, this story. So you can hear it there. Oscillating. So it's clearly something to do with this. So I found it most there. So if I pop my screwdriver in, turn that anti-clockwise, basically that um, core there, had, I don't know whether it's moved or, or what, I don't, do not know. So we're going to have to probably look at the IF on this. Um, but yeah, definitely it didn't take a lot to, if I do that again, you can hear it's oscillating now. So let's just start it oscillating again. Incidentally, this is uh, the second IF transformer. This is the first one here. So we might be able to alter it with this one as well. Yeah. In fact, that's that core's quite loose there. So I bet that's the one that's doing it. Yeah, but this is the one that's caused it. So when you're doing it fractional movements, because what's happened is probably just me moving the set around has disturbed them. There's not much you can do to these apart from blob a little tiny bit of um, wax in there just to stop it moving. So I'll probably do that before it goes back because you can bet your life as soon as it goes back it'll uh, rattle its way off again. 
Let's make sure we're still getting stations. A big journeyman. You know, the Incredible Genie, My Genie, which is a uh, Australian TV series. Bernard and the Genie, Simple Wish. I mean, you name it, just a, a ton of other movies. Don has thought long and hard. I mean, it sounds he remembers amazing, a film man. that most people, including the actor Sinbad, say doesn't exist. And he's reached the conclusion that Shazam has been disappeared. Yeah. You can still hear a little tiny bit there. Something by a Yorkshire lad, a man who was one of the all-time great masters of movie me So I'm going to go and get the dial plate a minute, just have a look to see where we are on the dial plate. I don't know when it was. Okay, I've just got um, Radio 2 on there. I wonder what his first name was. I don't know. <laughs> should be um, 88, it's actually 89 on the dial. And the other known station here. That are at least... Valley <laughs> Bill. It's classic FM. What the taking? Which is about half a megahertz, about 500 kilohertz off. It's about 100.5, so the whole scale needs to move um, to my left. That needs to be slightly more on the bottom end of the dial. So I'm going to have to mess with the alignment on this, um, which I knew anyway. RF alignment FM. Jet general air, 90 megahertz, 30 kilohertz deviation. Tune it to scale, adjust T3 for maximum output. So T3 is going to be T3 or TC3? And I'm sorry, just L3, which is one of these. L1, that's got to be L2, this must be L3 at the top here. Yeah, that's L3 there. Okay, well, I've got my signal generator set up. Um, let's get back. It's my, minus 60 dBm. Set at 90 megahertz. I've got the dial pointer at 90 megahertz, but nothing. So if I tune around. There's my tone at about, well, a little way off. So basically I've got to turn this one now till that signal comes in. Do is just grab my output meter. I'm going to stick my output meter. Oh, you couldn't really see what I was turning there. That's the VHF tuner module there, and the uh, one I was turning was this this one in here. L3. That's to bring the bottom end of the scale into alignment. Yes, yeah, so that's my good old uh, Marconi output meter. So if I turn, I mean, if I turn onto bigger scale, you can see it's. Uh, It is there, but I'm going to either have to stick a bigger signal in to swamp out that radio station, like there, and 
Let's see if I can get that. Uh, that's about the best there. What I will do is check it on 91 megahertz as well. So let's go um, 91. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's that's bang on for uh, that end of the scale. So, hundred megahertz next. Uh, tune receiver to this point. Well, unfortunately, that's classic FM. So I think I'm going to have to tune it to 101 megahertz. I set that on two. I've got to adjust TC3, which is TC1, TC2, TC3, which is this one. Very touchy. Let's decrease the level. Okay. So again, we'll go to ninety one megahertz. Tune it to there. For you in Plimstock, Elberton. L3 and uh, now we need to be adjusting L1 and L2 for maximum so this is L1 let's get it on the scale don't appear to be making any difference at L1 Is if I go in, it's detuning it. So I've got a bit out of that one, and L2, it's got to be this one. that up quite a bit. Uh, 
Okay. Now we've got to do the same, so we need to go with 101 again because I've got the station on 100. Just try TC3 again. So now I've got to adjust TC1 and TC2 for maximum output. So TC1 is this one. TC2 Try again, TC1 TC2 So again it says uh, repeat 3 and 5, well there is no 5, there must have been 3 and 4 so again, let's try 91. Let's try 101 again. Cool. That really has come up that. There we go. So let's disconnect the signal generator, turn it off. Let's pop our area up and make sure that uh, we now have stations in the correct places. Okay, that took a bit doing, but we're there. So I haven't um, secured the front face, so it, is, it will move about a little bit. But um, stations we need to look out for are, um, well not look out for, but stations that are I know are on a known frequency. We've got Classic FM which is on 100 megahertz, And we've got Radio 2 which is about 88.1. So it's um, just a fraction off this side of 88. So let's turn them on. Let's come over to here. Quando sono solo sogno all'orizzonte manca le parole. Oh, amazing. Reminds me of um <laughs> Step Brothers. A cra crazy film. Can't beat Will Ferrell. About to witness. Right, so we need to come over here now. 
the hotel. So traffic's coping reasonably well with the diversion route. MA eastbound, partially blocked at 7A for the shore There we are. They are Radio 2. From the exit slip road. Hope so you hopefully can see that. that. Open, uh, open fully soon and all lanes will be open. M62. No, York. Oh, that's fine. How wonderful. I'm sure a lot of people leaving. Like she, my. Well, that was really successful. I'm surprised how far out that was actually, but we brought managed to not only get the dial calibrated correctly, but also we pulled the signal level up considerably, considerably actually, especially on the um, I think it was on the higher end, wasn't it? Up around 100 megs. That was that was quite poor reception there. Yeah, that's really good. So I'm going to have a look through the rest of the bits and pieces and see what more I can do to it. Okay, I've jumped ahead a little bit here. Um, I have done all the alignments now on it. Um, I've also sealed some of these loose cans with wax so they don't rattle about. And uh, you know, I did send off a radio to a customer, perfect. And uh, when it got to him the other end, it was um, it was not very sensitive at all. And what basically had happened is all the um, all of the little uh, cores had moved about in transit because there's little like bits of elastic in these that hold it together and that had all uh, perished. So what, what I'm doing now is I'm just setting up to um, do the midpoint voltage and quiescent current. Um, so basically I've got to short the input to ground, which is these two, so I'm just going to solder a little bit of wire across there for the time being. doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can clip something across it, but it's easier just for the hell of it to solder a bit of wire. You've got to have the soldering iron on to remove the link anyway. Let's put my uh, temperature up. We'll get to it. So bear with me. I'm just going to solder this link, and that's between uh, the two uh, terminals here. I've got my gloves on because I just polished up the uh, metalwork and the front. Okay, right. I'm set up to do the um, midpoint voltage and the quiescent current. Um, so I've got my instructions in front of me. I've shorted out the input to ground. I've cut the test link and I've put my milliamp meter in there, which is the ad, the key sight. Keep all that the same thing, I suppose. Um, the connect supply and adjust RV2 to give three milliamps. Okay. It's all right. Yeah, we are a bit down. Um, let's get my screwdrivers. We're actually reading 1.1 milliamp at the moment. So let's uh, adjust that one. RV2 is this one nearest to me. Touchy. Come on. Three point oh three. Give a bit of a wiggle round. Three point oh two. It's going to be the best I'm going to get it. A one. Okay. So I've had the um, milliamp meter on for a little while now, and the quiescent current is um, fluctuating around a little bit. So I'm going to tweak that. Just back up to three again. God, it's 
really touchy. Okay, that's three. Now midpoint voltage then, that's this one. I'm looking for a reading of 8.85 on the junction of R14 and R15, which is down there. So again, we're too high. That's the other adjustment point down in here. for as I say 8.85 too far Six and now our crescent current has jumped up a little bit as well. Eight point eight seven. Come on, I did that just now. Come on, just a fraction. screwdriver. That one is doing my head in, it's moving. I think that's as close as we're going to get at 8.86 look. milliamps that is good to go there we are bit of a faff that but it is worth doing because it will improve the audio on a radio I presume it uh, helps battery life as well so that's pretty much it all I've got to do now is um, solder another link in here Remove that um, temporary bit of wire, but I can use that as a link, can I? Then it's final assembly and test. I've got to clean the um, base and treble knobs because they're a bit grubby, so uh, then it's done. Well, here it is the Hacker Hunter FMAM RP38A, all finished. Um, I've given the front and back a little bit of a polish up with um, that dash cleaner that I use. Uh, the base and treble knobs, I've had those um, in some foam cleaner because they were 
I don't know, they're still not perfect, but they're pretty good. So I thought what we'll do is we'll pop some power on this and have a listen to see how we're doing. So let's, um, well, we all know what's going to happen on um, medium wave and long wave, unfortunately. Let's try FM. Classic FM. It's failing. Possibly needs a trade of leave. Well, it seems even Google thinks that if its advertisers forget to be creative, then they're kind of wasting their time. The zoo, by the way, is named after the very first video ever to go up on YouTube. In the old days, when I was the creative director of Ogilvy and Mather, Guinness was one of our clients, and uh, I remember going home one weekend, and uh, my mum who was, I suppose, about 70 at the time, saying to me, oh, I saw one of your Guinness commercials. It's absolutely horrible. And I said, how dare you? What do you mean? That is ready for demolition. To a pirate pirate. Is that you get this huge overspill. In other words, uh, within the... Well, everything's working. The sure. We're going to be... No scratchiness. Uh, uh, to people who are simply not uh, relevant to you. And what digital media gives you through data is Work relevance. Perfectly. Relevance is absolutely the name of the game. These derelict houses, did anything untoward happen? Not in our room. Um, there was, I'm sure there was plenty of other stuff going on upstairs that we could uh, hear and smell and uh, yeah, um, never see quite what was going on, but there was... These, uh, I think we can safely say that FM is working. Dial calibration is near perfect. Um, let's try medium wave then. Okay. That one off. That one off. That one off. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can find any stations. pretty much oblivious to everything that's going on and um, we've just heard that's good reception for me man visiting the grave of his <laughs> very good long way right there's only going to be one station probably on long way but you never know Radio 4. Should be. We can know the dates that they're in market. We don't yeah, know which yeah. individuals on those platforms. The, the data laws in the UK prevent us from sharing that information, and we would never do that. And what allows... Well, let's pop some light back on. That is job done. All ready to go back to its owner. So um, I shall send him an email now and say, good to go, all done. Another one bites the dust. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this again, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and don't forget to check out my Patreon. Any help is very much appreciated and thanks to those that are helping me at the moment. And also have a look at my website which my lad has um, revamped recently. So uh, worth a new look. Bye for now.